Hello everyone, this is Marie Blue Angel, and I am continuing my playthrough of visual novels from Otome Jam 2023, and I am doing that by playing Mari's Magical Delivery. Deliveries? Question mark. I think it's deliveries. Mari's Magical Deliveries. Um, it seemed very cute, and I love a little witch girl game, so let's just get into it. This title illustration is so pretty. I love the lights from the city and the ferris wheel and Mari looks so cute. Look at the little bow. Oh, adorable. Anyways, let's get into it. Oh my gosh, so cute. Like, hmm, what's happening here? Okay. Um, Mari's Magical Deliveries. Okay. A short light dating sim made solo by Arenia for Ludum Dare 53 with the theme Delivery. Um, I, I think that's the other game jam submission, but um, uh, it's also listed as a submission for Otome Jam 2023. But either way, I love that for them. Okay, let's just start. Oh, where are we? Oh. Huh. <sighs> I made it. I set my broom down on the rack by the door. I love the space. Hey, kiddo, you made it. Let me change the settings a little bit. How was your first delivery, sweetie? Dad with all his little packages in hand. A little windy, but not too bad. But the wind is the best part. Isn't it? Feeling the breeze in your hair, rushing through the clouds. There's something special about the wind at that height. Oh. I love this. We're gonna get. We're making deliveries. We're on our little broomstick. We're experiencing all the nature and glory associated with that. I love it. Yeah. Though riding through the countryside was the best part. Ugh, if I could fly, that'd be so fun. That was always your mother's favorite to ride through. Too bad we don't get many deliveries out there. Ever thought about expanding the business to farmland? It was nice making a delivery out there. Not unless you want to learn how to transport cattle on a broomstick. Oh, that'd be quite difficult. Uh, maybe another time. <laughs> that face. I love the little character sprite over here. Has, she has like gorgeous purple hair. I love it. Were you able to pick up the rest of your belongings? Yep, here's the rest of my stuff. He grabs my bags and helps me to my room. Every time I walk in, I expect a layer of dust and a musty smell. But the smell of fresh linen hits me instead. I know it's been a while, but I hope it still works for you. Yeah, it's fine. We start to unpack the We start to unpack the rest of my bags, setting stuff in my closet and on the shelves. After opening the new box I brought in, he jumps up. Question mark why? Oh. I almost forgot. I haven't shown you how you'll be making deliveries in town yet. Okay, that's important. Can't that wait until later? Well... You still have to make some today. You still have some to make today, don't you? I might have gotten a few rush orders right before you arrived. What delivery- what- like, what do you deliver? I'm sure that'll be explained later. How about this? I'll unpack the rest of your stuff, and you can make some of the deliveries. I'll do the rest later tonight. I'm sure you want to look around town some, don't you? Yeah, I do. It's been years since I've been in town. Even after being back for a week or so, everything still looks so new. Great. It's a bit different from making deliveries in the countryside. Okay. So, I have a list of all deliveries that come here. We're the only witch delivery service in town, so we have a lot of clients to serve. Okay, love that. Great for business. So 
sometimes these clients will have something sent to us, and then they want us to bring it to them. Okay, so this is the part where you tell me what we deliver. Great. Or maybe they have something we need to pick up and deliver elsewhere. Okay, that makes sense. Sometimes their requests are a bit... different. But still something we can manage. Unlike cattle. And what's that supposed to mean? Uh, you'll see. Oh, what have I signed myself up to? The voice is not consistent yet, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. I'll have you do these two deliveries first, and then return back here when you're done for some more. If you don't get lost, that is. Ah, of course they won't. <laughs> what a dad laugh. Here. This delivery is at the college campus in town. The teacher there requested this box be brought to them. Once you're done with that, the front office should have another package for you. Bring that to the carnival. The carnival? Yeah. Did you see the big Ferris wheel in the skyline? We now have a permanent carnival in town. <gasps> a permanent carnival? How lovely. It's brought a lot of tourism in. You should check it out on your own sometime. All right. Campus first, and then the carnival. Oh, uh, then... And then back here. Right. Good luck, then. Okay. I step out... I step outside into the city life. Now, where do I go from here? Oh, uh, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, oh, we get a click? Uh, we were supposed to go to campus, okay. <laughs> you were hoping I'd actually pay attention, okay. I'm pretty sure we have to go to campus first, but okay, we have home, okay. Apartments, carnival, offices, campus, warehouse, and shops. And we're supposed to go to campus. I really like this background, uh, background. It's so pretty, I love the stars. I love the colors too. Okay, this is campus. Alright, I found the right place. I head to their office and give them the name of the recipient on the box. They point me towards their office. Hello? I'm here to deliver a package for a uh, Eugene. Ah, thank you so much. Who are you? <laughs> oh, you can say thank you so much still. Okay. Um, I'm his daughter. I'll be making deliveries starting today as well. Oh, well, welcome to town. I hope it won't be too hard for you finding your way around. I can't tell if Eugene's like a more masculine sounding name or a more feminine sounding name, but I'm gonna go with masculine sounding. I feel like I've run into more Eugene's that are uh, masculine presenting people. Okay. Uh, I hope not, too. Of course, it helps some that I was born here. Ah, this is exactly what I needed. Now I won't have to play another DVD for my biology class. Instead, we can study actual specimens. Ooh. Uh, frogs, maybe? Question mark? I don't even want to look at what's in the box. Ooh. Thank you for your patronage. I wave them off and head back to the office I came from. After a few moments, they're able to find my next package. A backpack? It has a luggage tag on it with the name Charisse. From the paper slip Dad gave me, that's the name of the next person I've got to see. The name sounds familiar. I have no clue. I pick up the, the light backpack and head out on my broom. I wonder what the fly time is. We have to go to the carnival. The roar of the carnival hits me as I get closer. As soon as my feet touch the ground, I'm swept up in the crowd. Sugary, sweet cotton candy and funnel cakes cling to the air, mixed with laughter from kids and couples. The giant Ferris wheel towers in the background, looming over the park and even some of the skyscrapers nearby. It's a fantastical dis display. It's a fantastical... It's a fantastical display of everything whimsical. Hmm. Now who 
wanted this backpack from campus. I considered trying to find a front office or a main li lobby, but it proves impossible. Every building is designed as increasingly, is increasingly more elaborate, or as increasingly more elaborate fantasy designs. Oh, that sounds confusing, but sounds fun also. The crowd leads me towards a grand carousel. Every inch of it is illuminated with multiple rows of ornate animals to ride. Ooh, that sounds fun. In front of the carousel is a bright clown. Oh, hello. So fun, bright colors. Even though she's against the vivid carousel, she's vibrant enough to stand out on her own. Her clothes seem to dazzle in the light as she performs. In one hand, she has a long ribbon, and in the other, she has some sort of clacker that chimes when she closes it. She twirls around, catching the eyes of everyone nearby. A flurry of confetti pops out. The crowd cheers. Oh, all cute confetti. Thank you, thank you. I step forward as the crowd and petals dissipate. That was wonderful. Aha, uh -huh, thank you. Oh, wait, that backpack you have. I take the backpack off my shoulder and hold it out. Sherry's? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing me my backpack. I left it in class, but I was too busy with work tonight to go back and get it before they locked the building. Thank you again. It's alright, don't worry about it. She quickly scribbles her signature on the delivery receipt and hands it back to me, eager to dig inside the backpack. Seeing her this close up... Charisse. It's me. Are you like childhood best friends? What, what's happening? It, it's been years. I didn't know you were back in town. Just got back, actually. Wow, that's great. I haven't seen you since. Oh, we graduated high school, right? Ah, you probably didn't recognize me in all this makeup. Did you? Oh, I'm not one to talk. I didn't see it was you at first either. It's alright. I work here as a part-time performer now. Every night I get to dance under the Every night I get to dance under the twinkling stars to applause. It's a dream. You're great. You're great at it. <laughs> Wait, what's the voice? You're great at it too. I never knew you were so into performing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. These two voices are too close to each other for me. Uh -huh. I guess it's just something I never thought I'd be able to do in the first place. It's wonderful here. The carnival has brought in so many new people and bright faces. When they say they were hiring, when they said they were hiring, I figured I'd be able to get a job in retail. Not something like this enough about me. What about you? What brought you back to town? Ah, uh, I don't want to bring the mood down so quickly. I moved back in. I moved back in. I moved back in with my dad. And now I'm helping him with deliveries. That sounds so fun. Riding around on a broomstick all day? Simply magical. I have to admit, it is pretty nice. Have you ever ridden on a broomstick? Oh, not since high school. Nobody in my family is a witch, so... I open my mouth to say something, but a loud ringing cuts me off. Oh, I've got to be on the main stage in five minutes. You gotta go, girl. Bye. We should chat more. Mari, I'll see you later, okay? With a hop, skip, and a jump, Charisse rushes out and disappears into the crowd. Hmm. Charisse was a close friend since childhood, but after I moved away, I lost contact with her. Now that I'm back in town, though, maybe I should try to rekindle that. Oh, that'd be so nice. But things have changed since then. Like what? 
Okay, we're, we're gonna dive deep into that later. I'm home! Good, good. Did you find your way around town alright? It was fine. It was fine. Wow, I'm gonna fund these voices also. They're different. Okay. I knew you'd be able to do it. Now here. There's only a few more deliveries for the day. He hands me two small packages. The one on the left goes to the library on campus. I would have given it to you earlier, but it just came in while you're gone. While you were gone. The one on the right goes to the old shopping district. It should say what store it goes to. I'll finish the rest on my own. Alright. I'll be back soon. We're going back to campus. Yes, we're going to the library. Already back on campus. I remember visiting this campus in high school to see if I wanted to go to college here. Of course, I ended up declining and going to school somewhere else. How would have things... How would things have been... If I can... If I can stop and read. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself, it's okay. How would things have been if I had gone here? I have a package for... Hans? <laughs> Hans. That's for me. Cool. Oh, your hair is so nice. I love how it like matches with like gold accents of your, your lapel there. A man in a long, expensive looking coat walks up, meekly raising his hand. His eyes dart away as he gets closer. I double check the package before handing it to him. Without hesitation, he rips the seal open on the slim box. He holds the box over, letting a book fall out into his hand. Perfect. The glum look in his eyes fade as a sparkle takes over them. He flips over the book, inspecting it eagerly. The book looks practically new with a glossy cover. Completely ignoring me, he starts muttering to himself. I think the main character is just going to have horror of this lower, medium tone voice, because... Oh, I realize I can't... I keep forgetting which voice to use. It's only been a few minutes already. Hmm. Ignore my yawns, please. Dr. Morris' next book on the theory of constellations is reg in regards to increasing magic. I've been waiting months for this to finally come out. I love it. Use the delivery service to get the book that just came out. I feel that. I'm a book lover. I 100% can get behind that. And there's not a scratch on it. Thanks. He turns around to walk off. Oh, wait! I need you to sign off on the package! Oh, right. His eyes lose their sheen as he trudges back. I hand him the paper and a pen. Without looking up at me, he signs it and walks off again. I don't think he remembers me. Okay, so you remember who this guy is. Hans was always the quiet type in elementary school, and only got more introverted in high school. He would always rather spend time with his stories than with actual people. He always seemed so... lonely. Hmm. I sigh and pick up my broom. I have a feeling I'm going to be running into a lot of familiar faces doing this. I mean, you basically are delivering to everyone in town. This makes sense. And then we need to go to the little shops. Ooh. I stroll down the street, admiring the shops that have popped up since I was last here. Some of the storefronts I recognize, but others look brand new. There's a wide variety of shops, ranging from niche boutiques to vintage collections, to restaurants and more. One shop in particular catches my eye with its bright neon sign. Get your game on. Like an arcade? I double check the, the address on the package and walk inside. It is an arcade. Ooh. Ooh. I blink a few times, my eyes trying their best to adjust to the sudden change in lighting. The inside of the shop is dark, but every corner is illuminated by the lights from arcade machines. Uh, hello? I cautiously walk around. Even though there's patrons inside, they're all too fixated on their games to notice me. 
On one wall is a row of card tables, with not nearly enough lighting to see adequately. Despite this, a group of people is huddled around them. My turn! One blonde lays a few cards down on the table, reading off a laundry list of details and status effects. That lets me draw three more cards. Oh, there's, there's too many. Okay. And I'll activate this, so you have to discard those three cards. Question mark. Are these just all... I don't know... I, I don't know if these are... How many voices? There's at least two. Which means I can activate this since it was discarded by my opponent. Hello? A few of them turn to see me, but the rest have their eyes peeled on the table. Because I activated this effect, effect, I can add a card I discarded to my hand. Dude, someone's here. Everyone at the table turns around, including the blonde. Hey ya, what can I do for ya? <laughs> so casual. I love the card playing. Cool. I've got a delivery for this shop. Sweet. I was wondering when the next booster sets would come in. I don't remember seeing you ever deliver them before, though. I'm new to the job. Poor you. That means you'll have to make deliveries to this chump. Hey, who are you talking about? I'm about to beat you, you know. And who's slacking off at work in the first place? We'll... we'll finish this later. He starts to walk back to the front, motioning me to come with him. Oh, so you are... I was doing... <laughs> blue question marks, I was doing this like... Eh, eh, like type of like nasally masculine sounding voice. And now I have a different voice for this man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Slow days mean we have to pass the time somehow. He calls this a slow day? It's alright. He takes the paper slip to the front desk and casually signs it, clearly used to getting packages for the shop. With the minimal lighting from the desk light, I can see his face much better. His hair is lighter and his face more masculine than I originally thought. He looks familiar, but I can't put a name on name to him. Here you go. I pick up the paper from him and check the name. It looks like it says... Caster. Hmm? Looking for something, Mari? Huh? He leans against the countertop, grinning. Well, you recognize me. That's nice. Didn't know you were back in town. I just got back recently. And you're already doing deliveries. No, re no rest for a witch, huh? Glad I'm not one. Huh. Most people wouldn't say that. Most people want too much. I like what I've got. That's nice, Caster. Hey, let me show you around while you're here. You've got a little spare time, right? We don't have any more deliveries to make, do we? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great, actually. We only had the two deliveries, right? We had the campus one and this one. So we're fine. Sweet. He hits the countertop and walks towards the arcade machines. A couple years ago, one of the alumni in town wanted to make the game club a more permanent thing. So with a few other alumni, they pitched in to set up a shop. At first, it was mostly board and card games. But they realized the more uh, regular people in town much preferred arcade games and such. Things that they can easily pick up and put down. I don't know, board? Board game cafes are pretty popular, or at least they're more popular than I ever thought. Like, there's some around me. I never really had a board game cafe near me in my old place, but I think it'd be nice to have just a board game cafe. Or, like, shop, rather. I mean, I like arcade games, too, but, you know. It's kind of hard to, like, I feel, have a balance between the two like with loudness and everything. I feel like the arcade games would be too overwhelming in loudness compared to just the board game. The board games and the card games, but whatever. If it works as a business here, it works as a business. 
So now we've got a wide variety of everything. How do you see the rules and guidelines of this low lighting? Oh, and that too. The low lighting would get me. What you mean? We just hold it up to the light. Sounds more like they've become nocturnal in here. <laughs> I started working here a few months ago. Time sure flies when you're having fun. Aside from it looking like a neon cave in here, it does seem fun. That's nice. I say all that and that's your response? Huh, you haven't changed much, have you? He turns around and laughs to himself. He's not laughing at me. Rather, that's just his carefree attitude. There's a lot of new sights to see in town. I bet you'll be busy getting your bearings straight. Yeah, it'll be a while before I see everything that's changed. There's even a permanent carnival in town now. Yeah. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. It was great to see you again. Yeah, and you get back to work too. <laughs> Shut it, or I won't let you buy any of these new booster packs. The group at the card tables laugh. Caster shrugs them off and shows me to the door. If you're ever in the area, feel free to fly by. I'll probably have more packa packages to bring here from the looks of it. Then, I'll see you again real soon. I feel that line needed a wink at the end. Wink. He waves me off as he waves me off as I get on my broom and leave. Well, that's nice. We met three people that we know from our past. How fun. Caster, a guy who was never who was never the best in class, but always the most vocal. He left an impression on everyone he met. No matter who it was, getting along with people was a breeze to him. As long as it wasn't his sister, though. Despite having their own groups and being overall friendly people, oh, this is for Charisse? Charisse and Caster never got along well with each other. If they had to do something together, they were always at odds. I guess some things never change. Dad, I'm home. For good this time, I hope. Rain pummels against the windows as I hang my broom up. Ah, I didn't even hear you knock. How was it? Not too bad. I'm pretty tired, though. Go get some rest. There's leftovers in the fridge if you haven't eaten yet. I'm going to finish my own deliveries. If you're asleep by the time I get back, then I'll sleep. see you in the morning. Sleep well. As quick as I arrive, he's already out the door. Yeah, some things really never change. Oh, that's hard, running a business. It really is hard. Okay. I'm sure we'll see more of that in the story. Mari and her dad's re their relationship together. I head to my room and pass out on my bed, the sound of the rain lulling me to sleep. Oh, I love it when it rains. You can hear that. It's always nice to fall asleep too. Okay, so that's day one of being back. We made our deliveries. It's cute. We've met three people from our past. I'm sure we will be dealing with more shenanigans soon. So let's see. <sighs> I slept harder than I thought I would. I stretch out and meander into the studio. Good morning. Morning. I'm just checking deliveries for today. That many? Nothing we can't handle. He hands me a small list of places. I need you to head to the business district to the large office building. Go to the card shop downtown and head to the shop and head to the carnival. So, business district, card shop, and carnival. He points out each of the packages and parcels on the table as he lists the locations. It's a lot at once, but each of them have the exact addresses labeled. Got it? Got it! That's what I like to hear. Fly safe. No breakfast? I'm hungry. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Okay, so we have the business district? Question mark? What does that mean? Because it's business district. 
I'm assuming that means offices. Okay, we'll start with there. Because we do that, we go to the shops, and we go to the carnival again. I have an envelope for Mrs. Rhea here, but it says to hand deliver it. Standing in the lobby, I click the buzzer for the upper floors. Hello? I have a letter for uh, Mrs. Rhea. I need to hand deliver it. Boop. We're letting you in right now. The elevator opens and I step in. Can you point me to Mrs. Reyes's office? The receptionist eyes me up and down before pointing down a hallway to our left. Her expression doesn't look judging so much as concern. Mrs. Reyes's office has no windows to the outside hallway. Instead, a large oak door separates us. I knock. Mrs. Rhea? A moment passes with no response. I knock again. No response. The door is too large to slip anything underneath, so I hesitantly open the door. Mrs. Rhea? No, we're not going to delay it another week. Hire more workers. I know you can't just throw more workers at everything, but we still have time to train new people. The woman furiously taps her fingers on her desk while talking on the phone. She seems to have noticed me, but doesn't care to answer yet. Mrs. Rhea, I have a letter for you. She waves me off. I guess she thinks it's a bill or something. And then get John on it. If he's doing something else, then tell him this is more important. I flip the envelope over to see who the sender is. It's from, a uh, Betsy Gaynor. Mrs. Rhea stops her tapping. Let me see that. She immediately stands, snatching the letter from me. With a quick motion, she tears it open. Uh. Her expression softens. Thank you. Thank you for bringing this to me. She gently rests the letter on her desk and signs off saying she received it. They must have really wanted you to receive it if they asked for it to be hand-delivered. It's from my grandmother. I wasn't able to attend our family reunion last month because of work. She doesn't know how to use the internet, but she knows how to get photos printed and send them in the mail. Oh, that's cute. Your grandma cares. And you care about your grandma. Work is hard, I know. She hands me back her signature slip. Deadlines can be missed, but sometimes family can't wait. I hope you'll be able to see her again soon. Yes, I hope so too. I quickly head out the door and back outdoors. Okay, that, and then we have more shops. Ah, back here again so soon. I guess Caster wasn't kidding when he said they get a lot of packages. I walk past the front counter, meandering around the arcade machines. As expected, there is a loud commotion coming from the tables in the corner. I forgot his voice already. Draw! Oh, Hans is there. Unexpectedly, Hans is sitting across from Caster. Take that! Caster slaps down a card on the table. Hans flips over a card. Flips over a card. Again. Over, over, over. Hans flips over a card. Blocked. Not with this card. I negate your negate. Too bad, because... Hans flips over another card. Now I can negate your negate, and you take my damage. Damn. Caster drops the cards in his hands on the table, giving up. Hey, that lady is here. The group turns to see me standing here, waiting on them. Mori! Hello, I have another package for you. Thank you, thank you. He takes a receipt and quickly scribbles on it. The others around the table are all curious at what's in the box. Except Hans, who's avoiding looking my direction. Did you not recognize me? Or do you have? That seems like you recognize me. Let's see. Ah! I wasn't expecting this for another few days. It's some new board games from indie creators the owner ordered online. Ooh, exciting. There's enough. 
there's enough here for us to have a stock to sell and a display version. Sorry about confusing me. There's enough for us to have a stock to sell and a display version. I love... Actually, I haven't really tried like any like tabletop RPGs or whatever. But I've been seeing more of them and they look very intriguing. You mean one for you to play around with? If you don't want to see it, then you can head out. If, if you don't want to see it, then you can head out. Be my guest. We're staying, we're staying. Caster pulls the board games out of the box, laying them on the table while Hans puts up their cards. Oh, Hans, did you know? Mari's back in town. Hans freezes, why? <laughs> uh, welcome back. Come on, that's all you got to say? He nudges his, he nudges Hans' shoulder, but Hans doesn't budge, why? You two talked some in high school, right? I think we talked a little bit. Then again, I'm surprised this guy ever talked to anyone that wasn't the teachers. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Caster exchanged a glance at Hans and back at me. Well, let bygones be bygones, huh? Anyway, thanks for bringing this. If you ever want them, if you ever want to try them out, or help me break this guy out of his shell. I'm sure I'll be back soon. I wave them off as I head out the door. Okay, so these two are there, and then we go to the carnival. The carnival is as lively as ever. The package I need, I have needs to be delivered to any of the managers and can't be left at the front office. I've got no choice but to head through the carnival. I walk through the front gates, blending into the crowd. It doesn't take long until I spot a familiar face. Mari! Fancy seeing you here, Charisse. She twirls, letting the lace float in the air. You're always here for business, aren't you? Maybe one day I'll be able to walk around on my own. But for now, yes. I've got a package for one of your managers. Any of them can sign off it can sign off on it. Alright, let's go look for one. Aren't you working? I just noticed she doesn't have any makeup applied. Nope, my shift just ended. She hops and skips in front of me, leading the way deeper into the fairy tale world. This way! It doesn't take long for her to point out one of her managers to me. A few minutes later, and I've delivered the package. Woo! Wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? I was just wondering. I was just wondering. Since I'm done with work and you've finished a bit more of your work, would you like to ride the Ferris wheel with me? Just once, and then you can get back to your deliveries. Sure. I'd love to. I'd love to. It shouldn't take too long, and if we get stuck, then I can just fly us off on my broom. Great! We head towards the large ferris wheel looming over the carnival. I hadn't realized quite how big it is until now. I hadn't realized... I hadn't realized how big it is until how quite... I, I'm just... My brain is stuck on the placement of quite, but that's fine. I hadn't realized quite how big it is until now. The giant metal frame sparkles with lights, twinkling against the night sky. Charisse walks up to the to the entrance. A car for two, please. The attendant lets us in the carriage, shutting the door tight. My heart skips as the carriage sways upward in the air. Oof, I'm a bit on a Ferris wheel, a little bit. It is kind of, you know, uh, heart racing to go on a Ferris wheel, though. I don't particularly love it, but I don't hate it either. Have you ever ridden a Ferris wheel before? I haven't. Really? I'm glad I asked you to ride it with me then. Ooh, look at the sky. The carriage eases us upwards, bringing us above the tops of the circus tents. For people like me who can't use magic, it's the closest we can get to flying around. You can see the whole city from here. When you're in a plane, 
everything is so tiny, it's hard to register that it's actual places. But up here, you're at just the right height to see details. It makes you appreciate the small things, you know? You're right. If you're scared, you can hold my hand. She holds out her hand. I surprise her by actually taking it. <laughs> It'll be over before you know it. Our carriage, reaches, bleh, our carriage reaches the peak of the arc. Feels like you can see every corner of the city from here. Now, the city I once hated is entirely before my eyes. Why did you hate the city? What happened? I want to know. There's, there's a backstory there. I can feel it. The roar of the carnival fades into the background. Wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Cherise is glued to the window, still gripping my hand. It's more fun watching her than the view. Fun. Ferris wheel, Ferris wheel time. Ugh, now it's over. And ta-da! We're back on solid ground. I'm not used to being in the air where I can't control it. That means you need to take it easy more often. You say that, but yet we're at where you work. That's different. Here, every day is like a dream. I see why you like it so much. But for now... But for now, I need to get back to work. Whenever you want, I can show you even more of the carnival. There's even more rides and performances. And there's food trucks. Thank you. I'll take you up on it sometime. I wave her off as I head out. Whew. Glad that's done. Done for the day? Yep. I think I'm going to call it a night. Good night. Good night. We have very minimal interactions with our dad. Which is fine. I'm just curious about that. And also, why do you hate the city? Who knows? Okay, I'm going to call it here for today because it's already been like 40-ish minutes. And I think I can maybe get this done next time. Um, if it's just a little bit more, then I'll edit in the next part, but probably not. I think this is a good place to stop for today. I'm loving it so far. I think it's very cute. We've already met the three love intros, I believe. Charisse, um, Hans, and... Caster, I almost forgot his name. And I'm very intrigued how um, the story will unfold a little bit more and if we'll get more details about why Myri's back in town, particularly what's her relationship with her dad like, why is it a little, you know, not fragile per se, but not, not the closest, which is fine, of course, but, you know, would love to hear the story about that. Was her hating the city such as this town because of something else that happened who knows i don't know anyways we'll have to save that for next time if you haven't already done it please like the video and if you want to see more of mari's magical deliveries uh, then please subscribe to my channel so you will be notified when the next part is out and i really appreciate that um i'm slowly but surely surely walk, working through a whole bunch of um, indie visual novels um, and I'm really loving it. I'm glad that I'm able to like do a little bit more cons of consistent like playthroughs um, and posting them on the channel. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a good rest of your day and I will see you 